But we've been looking at it, trying to look at interest groups for a while now. Uh, but I am somehow talented enough uh, to... Can I get this to go away? There we go. Um, to actually get further behind when teaching from home than teaching at the school. Because, you know, there's more... There's more computer stuff to operate. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of where we're at now. So I apologize for that. I'll just do the best we can. Um, but you got, uh, let, let, let's think about what we've been doing here. So a number of you have sent me stuff that I got a grade that I hadn't yet. Um, and about the Nick Naylor, you know, thank you for smoking. I think that's a great movie. It's rated R. You know, if you're bored, you can get on there and uh, uh, watch the whole movie. Uh, but I don't endorse certain sections of, you know, there, there's stuff that there doesn't have to be on there. And, the, you know, they like the F word and so forth. Uh, but, I mean, it is, it, it's a really good movie for showing kind of how interest groups work. Uh, the ones, uh, the you know, the stuff that I, I've, I've read some of your stuff. And it's kind of a libertarian movie, I think. Um so, you know, what Nick's doing isn't good, but on the other hand, you know, the, the writer, the writer was the, he's the son of a famous conservative uh, newsman. Um, and he seems to like Nick maybe a little better than the, um, than the kind of hypocritical folks who are going after smoking. Uh, but I mean, it's funny and it's thought provoking and as somebody put eye opening, uh, just does a real nice job of showing you kind of the, the questions involved with interest groups. So we're gonna we're, we're gonna look at them here. Uh, interest groups are there. Here's the definition of them: they're associations that seek to influence government, and people who work for them are called lobbyists, right? Um, and they get their name because they wait for lawmakers in the lobby of the Capitol. There used to be a motel in Washington, D.C. called the Willard Hotel. Um, and Congress only met like three or four months out of the year. Congress met, meets pretty much year-round now and you know, goes in recess around uh, Christmas time um, or adjourns around Christmas time and, you know, the session ends. Um, but it used to be, you know, kind of a part-time job. And so everybody stayed in motel. Congress stayed in motel. Um, and so lobbyists would stay in that Willard Motel too, or hotel, I can't remember, yeah, I guess it was a hotel. Uh, hotel, let's see, it's a, if it's a motel, it's out, your doors go to the outdoors. A hotel, the doors go to the indoors. So Willard Hotel, and they'd wait in the lobbies of the hotel for the congressmen to get up in the morning, and then they'd make their case. A lot of railroad lobbyists, you know, it was, it was during the Gilded Age. Uh, so that's kind of where the name comes from. Uh, okay, so it's going to have four um, four functions. The first one is get policies enacted. Now look at what I've got there, and I'm putting no retreat, no surrender. That's a line from a Springsteen song. Uh, but both interest groups and political parties are linkage institutions, meaning. They link the people to the government. That's a way for us to, to kind of get connected with the government. Uh, and remember what we said about political parties. They'll drop your issue, you know, like a, like a hot potato. You know, if um, when I worked, I, you know, I interned for a Democrat uh, from Georgia back during the 90s, back when I was uh, uh, in college. Uh, and I remember while I was interning for him, he was in the process of changing his abortion position from pro-life to pro-choice, basically because he felt, you know, seemed to me because he felt like it was more of a political winner to uh, take the pro-choice position. Uh, and so political parties, you know, they'll, they'll get you upset if you want uh, linkage institutions that have firm and unchanging positions on the issues. Well, interest groups will do that for you. You know, the, you know, the NRA is for the right to bear arms, right? Uh, the AARP is going to fight for seniors' Social Security benefits. All right, so they, they fight for the issue regardless of whether or not, you know, they feel like it's popular. So 
uh, depending on whether you see yourself more as maybe a pragmatic person or a really idealistic person, if you're really idealistic and you've got something you really, really, really believe in and you don't want to compromise on it, well, maybe interest groups are the Lincoln's institution for you. Okay, second thing they do is they represent the members of a particular interest group. NRA represents gun owners, ARP represents seniors. Those are really kind of our top two uh, groups in society. All right, they provide information. You know, they have folks who work for them and they research the issue all the time. So, I mean, uh, what, if you watch the movie, Nick's a real, you know, he's, a, he's, a, he's an expert on the smoking issue. Now, he's spinning it, you know, uh, in such a way as to benefit big tobacco. But, you know, that's one thing he's doing. He's providing information and then finally provide a way for, its, for their members to get involved. All right, so it spells out RIP, does it not? All right, represent members, information, participate, and policies is the way that goes. All right. Um, if you, I don't know that I sent you the Merchants of Death uh, meeting. That was pretty good. Uh, so Nick is buddies with us. So you might look that one up. Uh, that's it's at fi apparently at fifty five thirty seven. Uh, on the movie, uh, if you pull up the movie, you know, but you got to pay for it. Um, but you know, he's buddies with uh, leaders of alcohol industry and uh, lobbyists for the gun industry, and they kind of compare notes and tactics. And you know, it's funny. It's a, you know, it's a comedy satire. Okay, here I'm going to breathe a second. I'm going to try to keep this one shorter. If I could just get the the hang of this you know i'd get them to kind of class length you know maybe hour long but i'm going to try to keep this in maybe 30 minutes or so because i don't trust myself to get it done right you know i keep i keep messing it up okay um so uh influential lobby so here's the names of the interest groups so we're just kind of learning the names of these things all right there's more interest business interest groups than any other type of group, they've got the money to do it. All right, uh, so one of our first ones in our history was called NAM, the National Association of Manufacturers. Um, you know, kind of a Trump, you know, you know, labor union, you know, what? Railroad-oriented originally, not labor union, uh, but, you know, Trump-oriented today, most likely. Business Roundtable, that's Bill Gates, you know, big business. Uh, you know, very influential Chamber of Commerce. Some of you are, what's it called, Youth Leadership. That's run by our local Chamber of Commerce. So it influences, represents small business, and every, about every town in America has a Chamber of Commerce, kind of a booster for its small business. Okay, uh, worker groups, unions a lot of times. All right, so the AFL-CIO, that's our leading labor union in the country. Uh, stands for American Favorite Federation of Labor. Uh, it was created during the Gilded Age, and then it combined during the Great Depression with uh, another labor union called the Congress of Industrial Organizations. AFL skilled workers, CIO is unskilled workers. All right, so they kind of combined uh, during the Depression. So still our uh, leading labor union uh, in the country. Unions are not as strong as they used to be. Uh, and kind of a conflict. I mean, the, the, this union, unions are really, really swing votes because the, the leaders have been fighting for the Democratic Party their whole life, and then the, uh, the, the rank and file have kind of realigned in a Trump uh, direction, and so the union's really kind of divided right now. Uh, and you see that a lot. Uh, a lot of times the, the leadership of... A, uh, of an interest group might not really see things the way the, the rank and file members of the interest group do. Uh, okay, uh, the ABA is lawyers, American Bar Association. If you pass the bar exam, uh, you're qualified to stand before the bar. Think about the inside of a courtroom that you've seen on TV. Uh, you know, the, the defendant and the lawyers and the prosecutor, they're all in front of that bar, and then, you know, the little audience is behind the bar. That thing's called the bar. Uh, so you pass the lawyer exam, the bar exam, you're qualified to be in front of the bar. All right. Um, tends to be a uh, Democrat-leaning uh, group. Uh, lawyers tend to be a little more liberal. 
a lot of times. Um, we'll, we'll comment on that in just a second. All right, uh, the AMA is for Doctors, American Medical Association. Um, I don't believe I sent you the video on Obamacare, so I'll do that soon and very soon, I hope. All right, uh, but, you know, the AMA is really in there pretty prominently, and so it tends to be pretty conservative, American Medical Association. Uh, and so these two find each other on opposite sides because of, like, malpractice suits, uh, lawsuits against uh, doctors, uh, and so Republicans tend to sponsor legislation to limit the damage somebody can get uh, on malpractice lawsuits. And lawyers don't li obviously don't like those malpractice lawsuits, so they tend to be right-leaning, and then the lawyers kind of benefit from these lawsuits, so they tend to be kind of left-leaning. They oppose the, the limits on the damages. All right, uh, and then the NEA is teachers, uh, National Education Association. Each state has its own version of that. Uh, from time to time, I'm a member of a group called GAE. There's another one that's not quite as unionized. Uh, it's called PAGE, and so it's a little more centrist than the, the NEA. So I think I'm a member of PAGE now. At any rate, rate you know, it's an interest group for teachers. Those are... Uh, so the NEA is the leading national teacher interest group, and it leans left. All right, hey, teachers are paid by the government. Okay, groups in society, NAACP, as African Americans tend to use, tends to use the courts. Uh, NAACP is the group that brought Brown versus Board of Education uh, as a lawsuit. Um, Let's see, st stands for National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. Obviously, that's not the terminology anymore. Uh, but it was created at the time that it was in the like turn of the century, 1890s, turn of the 20th century. Uh, W.B. Du Bois founded it. Uh, you use uh, the courts when your cause is not all that popular. So, you know, uh, turn of the century, civil rights wasn't a real popular cause among almost anyone other than African Americans. So when you're going through the court, you know, doesn't do you any good to march if you're not popular. Um, and interestingly, when we get to civil rights, we'll find that the NAACP, since it focused on the courts, didn't really approve of Martin Luther King marching uh, because the marchers were breaking the law. Uh, okay, so, you know, interest in group dynamics with partic within particular causes. All right, now... <coughs> Sorry. Now it's the National Organization of Women, um, founded in the 1970s by Betty Friedan, uh, who wrote the famous feminist uh, book, Feminine Mystique. Um, very pro-choice, left-leaning uh, organization. MALDEF is kind of the Latino version of uh, NAACP, uses the courts. AARP, uh, one, of the, you know, one of the two top groups in society. So American Association for Retired Persons. Um, I'm not retired, but I recently got something in the mail for AARP. I think I'm eligible to join when I turn 55. Um, so, you know, they're already recruiting me. And they're really good with recruitment efforts. That's why they're so successful. Uh, really big on Social Security and Medicare, protecting Social Security and Medicare benefits. And since those are big time spending programs, really the two big spending po programs in America, other than maybe Medicaid for the very poor and then uh, military stuff, uh, very much a Democratic uh, leaning organization. Okay, I'm going to stop. Um, So you get that stuff memorized. Is there something else I need that? What do I need? Okay. So then we've got uh, issue groups here. Okay. Um, so three of them just real well known. Um, you see them in the, in the news a lot. Christian Coalition, you know, it's, you know, uh, very influential on the Republican Party. Uh, it's the anti-abortion gay marriage group. 
uh, you know, representing traditional values. All right. Um, let's see. Number two, the NRA. Uh, the NRA, you know, I think we know about it. Uh, I think y'all know about it. That was the most cited issue when y'all re- uh, wrote your kind of self-ideology papers, guns. Uh, I think you're pretty uh, familiar with the NRA, a lot of you. Uh, and other than the ARP, you know, just really, really, really successful. Those are our two most successful interest groups uh, in the country. The ACLU tends to be on the opposite side of the Christian Coalition. Uh, American Civil Liberties Union, they tend to focus on free speech issues. So kind of a culturally liberal group uh, to uh, be the opposite of the culturally conservative group, the Christian Coalition. Okay. Um, There are also public interest groups. All right. Uh, So these kind of have a challenge because they're inspired by, they were inspired by the social movements of the 60s and the 70s. And so they claim to represent everybody in society, uh, not just one particular group like, you know, uh, an occupation or an ethnic group or an age group or something like that. All right, so one of them was called uh, Common Cause, uh, and they were basically against corruption in politics. Didn't want too much money being spent. Um uh, in politics, seniority means the longer you've been in Congress, the more power you have. We'll we'll look at that when we when we get to to Congress. But but you know they they were against corruption uh, and they're still around. Um, but you know it's a pub. So they but they're representing everybody, not just one particular group in society. All right, uh, and another one. Um, huh. All right, another one's called uh, public. Citizen, all right. Hey, I change these things like every semester, and then I'm kind of surprised to see how I've changed it. So I was looking at that. All right, um, it was a '70s group. It was a consumer group, protecting consumers. And so this guy, Ralph Nader, we've seen him before because he ran for president as a third party in 2000. The Green Party, very liberal, and uh, kind of ruined the election for Gore in Florida and helped uh, Bush get elected. Um, but um, he, he wrote a book called Unsafe at Any Speed about these cars that were dangerous and they blew up because like the, the gas tank was in the, in, the, in the back of the car, I think. Uh, and uh, so the Pinto was one that was a, kind of a popular car uh, when I was a little kid and the Corvair was the Chevy version of that. Um, and so people getting killed in explosions. If they got rear-ended, you know, the car blow up, people get killed. Uh, and so the car companies said, you know, we're, we're getting bad press. And so they said, well, it's because people were speeding, you know, when they rear-ended somebody. It's not our fault. It's not the fault of the car. Uh, and so then this guy Nader, he, he starts uh, researching crash tests. And he finds out that uh, these cars are blowing up even if, uh, you know, there's a crash when the cars are going like 15 miles an hour. So the name of the book was Unsafe at Any Speed. Um, and uh, like the, you know, the car companies tried to dig up dirt on him. They, they sent, put spies on him so they could discredit him, you know, figure out that he, you know, he does something, uh, he's got some nasty habit, got some se- secret that he doesn't want anybody to know about. It. And, you know, they find out then in his free time he liked to, uh, Okay, you're going to be shocked. Research car companies. And so, you know, they just couldn't get him. There wasn't anything to get. Uh, so because he became a hero as a consumer advocate, you know, he, he ran for president a couple of times. All right, but he's just really, really liberal. So, you know, to the left of the Democratic Party. All right. Uh, and then Sierra Club is kind of the most prominent environmentalist, environmental mental group. So what? That's a picture from the fall of those fires in Australia. Wasn't that in the fall? Uh, and they're, uh, you know, feeding the koala bear. I think that was back in the fall. It must have been. All right. Um, okay. Seems like it was yesterday. All right. Uh, so here we have that. Okay. So you got 15 groups. Um, so I guess what we're going to do for next, what's today? Wednesday. For Monday. Uh, I mean, I'll send you something to read. But let's take a quiz where you memorize all 15 groups. Now, it's got to be on the honor system. You know, there, there's no way for, 
you know, for me to, uh, you know, watch you, monitor you. So, you know, that would be something to, um, for me to figure out what to do about for next time I've got to be doing distance learning. Uh, but at the top, you know, raise your right hand and promise that you, you got to memorize. But, but it's a good thing to know. All right. Uh, okay. So here they So you want to identify all 15 of those groups. Okay. So pause it. Let's see how I do. I bet I don't, can't come up with 15. All right. So I've got the business ones, right? All right. Um, so, uh, NAM, business round table, chamber of commerce. So then we went, what? worker groups so we're at three all right so the worker groups uh afl cio that's the unions doctors and lawyers aba ama and then teachers nea so we're at is that seven okay so then we got uh what group demographic group groups in society and it's going to be four of them is it not so the naacp for african americans now for women uh, MALDEF for Latinos, uh, and ARP for senior citizens. So that gets us to seven and four, that's 11. All right, and so then 15 is going to be the last one. It's going to be like issue groups. Uh, so we ended up maybe 17, didn't we not? Let's see what we got. All right, so we've got Christian Coalition on Values, the NRA, that's guns, all right, and then uh, ACLU. So 11 and 3, that's 14. ACLU, Civil Liberties, kind of liberal. And then we did, so it's, it's 16, I think it's 16. Uh, and the, uh, what, common cause is consumers, is that right? And public citizen is, uh, is did I get that backwards? Public, common cause is going to be anti-corruption and public citizen is going to be consumers. Let's see if I got that right. Yeah. Yeah, almost. Ooh, it is 17 because I forgot Sierra Club. All right. So the number is 17. All right. Uh, so, hey, why don't we do this? You got to get 15 of the 17 to get full credit. All right. That way I don't have to change it. Well, it's too late. So memorize 17, but on the quiz, he gets 15 of them learned. That's for Wednesday. So right now you're just taking the notes. Doing some learning. Learning's a good thing. In a pandemic, uh, what you want, you want something else to think about and, and so learning. Okay, I think I, even though it says I'm not, I think I... All right. Uh, so there's the Women's March. Um, and I think it was right, you know, it was like around right at the time of Trump's inauguration and there's been a few more since then. Um... And it is, uh, it was a bunch of different, uh, but the women's movement is a social movement, like the civil rights movement is a social movement. Lots of different interest groups uh, are involved in that. Uh, so you add up a bunch of interest groups and they're working together, that's kind of a social movement. You know, the individual groups have their specific efforts. All right, um, so... Let's go back to those two. Let's go back to the last three. So the Sierra Club is trying to get clean air for us, right? Uh, and, you know, uh, Common Cause is trying to make sure our cars are safe. Uh, and I'm sorry that our politicians are honest and public citizens. Man, I crossed those two up. Trying to make sure that our cars are safe. Well, they have a problem getting people to join because everybody breathes air, everybody buys cars, everybody, you know, wants kind of honest leaders. Um, and so you have the problem of the free rider. You can get the benefit of the group without joining it. I'm a terrible free rider for several things. One of them used to be, I don't, I don't really listen to it as much. Uh, but NPR, I used to feel like NPR was just the best news out there. Uh, I've kind of felt like it drifted to the left uh, a little bit, but I used to listen to NPR all the time. Uh, and once or twice a year they have pledge drives, and at that point I just turn on music because, you know, you know, if I went home and I told my wife, hey, I gave 100 bucks to NPR, 
uh, well, we're trying to put, you know, kids through college, you know, got pay for the house, yada, yada, yada. That wouldn't go over well. So, I mean, I just didn't bother uh, trying to give them money. So, I mean, I benefited from their newscast, but I wasn't a, uh, um, I didn't pay for it. So, I'm called a free rider. So, uh, interest groups cost money. Their operations cost money. So how do they over get people to join and overcome the problem of the free rider? I mean, seniors get their Social Security whether or not they join ARP. All right, so they do it three ways. Uh, so the first way is called material incentives. All right, and the material incentives is they give they give you they make money for you. So the ARP gives travel benefits. So every summer, hey, I don't know if it'd be this summer, but every summer the uh, McKenzie family in the week of the July the 4th, all right? Um, so let's hope, you know, if we get on the China trajectory, maybe we can start going on uh, um, vacations in July. Um, but um, my parents, like everybody in the McKenzie family goes to Hilton Head together. Uh, my wife's parents, my parents, you know, our kids, you know, big family thing at Hilton Head. Um, and the older people on the vacation get cheaper rates because they're members of ARP. So you can get really, really good travel benefits uh, if you join ARP. So, I mean, what that means is not only uh the people who would tend to be free riders join but also maybe you know conservatives who don't even agree with maybe some of the stands of arp join it because hey they want those travel benefits so that's one way to get people to join and the arp is the best at this nra does it too arp really specializes in this all right so literary incentives um did i forget the nra when i was doing the list I think I forgot it. So that put us at 17. Is that right? All right. Uh, okay. Solidary incentives. All right. So like-minded people like hanging out together. So gun shows. Uh, and so gun owners go and they hang out together and they talk to people about, you know, guns. And they probably talk some politics too. Uh, make references to politics. And, um, and so people enjoy being around people that kind of see the world that, as they do. And so... Uh, solidarity means together, so uh, so the the adjective version of solidarity is solidary. Um, so the NRA kind of specializes here. The NRA does some material incentives too, but you know specializes in uh, these uh, gun shows and solidary incentives. All right, then ideological incentives. Uh, notice the NRA does all three of them. All right, uh, so people join because they're true believers. So Christians join the Christian coalition because they want to cut down on abortion. All right, the NRA, um, uh, you know, the, you know, gun owners join the NRA because they believe in the right to bear arms. They don't want the government messing with their guns. You don't want the government messing with your guns. All you folks have talked about that. All right, uh, and the ACLU are, are culturally liberal, and so they believe in their cause. All right, uh, you know, the Sierra Club, the environmentalists. All right, uh, so there's ideological incentives. Okay, hey, so pretty good, pretty easy little uh, heading on that one. So take 20 seconds, get that learned. All right, and then we'll have one more, and my goodness, my goodness, uh, you know, keep your fingers crossed, pray if you're so inclined, uh, that I don't botch it when I post it. Oh, my goodness, if I only had a brain. Okay, so here we go, number four. And so this is, you know, I need to put, put a picture of a thank you for smoking up here uh, because this is really kind of the question that's being raised. Are interest groups good for democracy? Uh, and I really love uh, Thank You for Smoking because it raises the question and you think about a tobacco lobbyist uh, who makes his living convincing people to do things that are going to give them cancer. So that's not a good cause. And so, you know, on the one hand, hey, you know, Nick Naylor, he, he's not a good guy. He's not a good thing. He's just this, so several of you put like deceitful, you know, uh, he's a good liar. He's good at spin. 
uh, and he's charming, right? Uh, so, I mean, he, he's a troubling character in a lot of ways, in a lot of ways. But we're so, always, when I'm watching it, somehow or another, I'm rooting for him. Maybe because he's trying to be a good dad. I don't know. I mean, I don't like his answer. You know, I'll, I'll, if he really wants to, I'll give him his first pack. I don't like his answer. My kids don't agree with me on certain issues. I can't, you know... Once you're an adult, you got to make up your mind on these things. So on the other hand, you know, I've got to embrace their free will. Doesn't mean I'm going to buy them stuff that I disagree with, right? Doesn't mean I'm going to support the things that I dis disagree with. But, you know, got to embrace, love them. You know, don't make it, you know, can't love them any less because they disagree with me on things. Um... So, I mean, it really, really raises some interesting questions. Right? You know, a fascinating movie. Um, and I like having the discussions of it. I wish you all were here to, you know, you know I wish it could be more interactive. Because um, I, I hadn't quite said the thing. You know, and the thing that's fascinating to me about this one, and I've looked up stuff about it, and I, last semester I ended up watching, like, the whole movie. Uh, for the first time in several years. And it really got me thinking, but you know what? I don't know what I think of it. It's just really fascinating. Um, don't know what conclusions are uh, I'm drawing from it. But, it is, but I mean, I love the way it makes me think. All right, so then the question is, um, it, are, Demo uh, are interest groups good for democracy? So we got this story right here. I don't know which one of these guys is Jack Abramoff. Uh, let's say it's him. All right, um, but uh, he was a lobbyist. Uh, near maybe the early 2000s. I think this was the W. Bush years. Uh, and so he charged Indian tribes $85 million to protect their gambling interests out, out, out in the West. You know, um, Indian tribes run casinos out in the West. I think y'all are aware of that. Um, and then at the same time, he was representing Christian groups that uh, were against gambling. All right. Uh, so he's representing both sides. Uh, and then and making millions of dollars representing both sides of this issue. So on the one hand, you're going, well, hey, if he can make money, blah 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 blah. All right, uh, but that you know that I don't really buy. You know, that's the drug dealers and the pimps argument. You know, that's the slave owners argument. That um, uh, and they, it's, it's the Nick Naylor argument, and I, I, I profoundly disagree with that argument. Hey, people are gonna fill in the blank, the bad thing, smoke sell cocaine on slaves. So my, I might as well make money of it. And remember what Lincoln said, like he quoted scripture, and he said, uh, well, it may be, may be that bad stuff's got to happen, but woe unto he by whom it happens. So I'm not willing to be sophisticated about it and say, hey, there's no right, wrong here. Uh, who am I to judge? Well, I'm, I'm kind of judgy on stuff like that. Um, maybe it's bad to be judgy, but I'm kind of bad. I'm kind of judgy uh, on, on some of the some of that stuff. Um, so I'm not willing to let Nick off the hook. And so you know, a lot of people looked at Abramoff and they said, well, you know, I'm not. We're not willing to let him off the hook. He's in prison now. Um, he also took people to golfing in Scotland. So this is a picture of it. If you're a golfer. You know that St. Andrews golf course in Scotland where the British Open is played is like on every golfer's bucket list. The sand traps are just really, really deep and it's like, you know, the, the grand poomba of all hard golf co courses and everybody who really loves golf uh, wants to play there. Now, I kind of like golf and I play like, I don't know, three or four times a summer. It hurts my back and I'm not any good. Uh, so I decidedly do not want to uh, play St. Anne. I'd like to go there and see it, but I don't want to play it. I would never I'd have to pick up my ball and throw it out of those sand traps. Um, but he took these congressmen golfing. Well, somebody takes you to do something on your bucket list. You know, somebody, if, if one of y'all paid for me to go to Gettysburg, uh, and then at the end of the semester your grade was at 87.3, and then you sent me an email, uh, and you said, oh gosh, if I get an A, I'm going to get into Harvard. All right, I'm going to get into UGA or whatever. All right, I just really need this A. And hey, the Gettysburg Cemetery sent me this thing. Didn't we have such a great time at Gettysburg? You know, I really felt like 
uh, we bonded when we went to Gettysburg together, Dr. McKenzie. Uh, well, you know, it's going to be awfully hard for me to say, well, dang it, the math says you got an 87, so you get a B. You know, um, so it's corrupting, you know, doing favors for big time favors for, pe for people. Um, and so he was just seen as, you know, corrupting, you know, this corrupt influence on democracy. You know, it's elitism, the elite theory of democracy. Folks don't care about the issues, they're just making themselves rich, manipulating people, which is kind of uh, what Nick's doing, you know. Um, okay, so. So the question then is, are interest groups good or bad? So you got three ways in which they're good. What's the first thing I said about them? The functions of interest groups. They fight for your cause and they don't drop you like a bad habit when your cause becomes uh, unpopular. So they're, they're not like interest groups. You know, whatever the cause is, they're going to stick to that cause. Okay. Um, okay. So you got that. All right. Second one. Participatory democracy, they're, they're Lincoln's institutions. They get you involved and connected. Um, you had this guy, Alexis de Tocqueville, who wrote a book called uh, Democracy in America. It's kind of the book about, it's kind of the political philosophy book about America. It's it, I brought it home with me uh, for our shutdown here. All right, uh, if I can ever get ahead where I've actually got the free time that you would have in theory if you're working from home. You know, it may be some, I'm trying to read a book about Gandhi right now, and so it might be that uh, I've got the Diary of Anne Frank, you know, I'm, I'm sitting that one, you know, so that one might be second, you know, I'm about halfway through the Gandhi book, uh, and then it may be that democracy in America's next, all right? Um, but he argues that the thing that makes American democracy about great is that Americans are joiners. They join groups to solve problems. Whereas other countries want the government to solve all their problems, Americans get, Americans get together and solve problems. So he calls interest groups voluntary associations. Um, and hey, when we're working together to solve problems, you know, we're less isolated, you know, we form, you know, friendships and we're, because we're part of something bigger. Um, uh, and he tells this story somewhere in there. He says, a French guy's driving his wagon down the road. And, you know, he was riding in the Jacksonian era, like uh, 1830s. Um, and uh, he says, um, so a, guy's, a French guy's driving his wagon down the road and there's a tree in the road. All right, what does the French guy do? He, he finds the government leader in the area, and he tells the government the, the government needs to find a way to get trees out of the road. All right, so then you go to America, and Tocqueville was from France, so, I mean, he'd, like, observe this in France. Uh, he goes to America. Sounds like a guy goes into a bar joke, doesn't it? He comes to America, and he says, Americans ride him his wagon down the road. There's a tree in the road. What does he do? Well, he, and he can't, he can't, you know, move the tree by himself. So he knocks on, I don't know, 10 doors in, in the town and they all bring out their axes and they chop up the tree and they pick up, you know, the, the pieces of tree that they've chopped up, the logs, I guess you'd say. All right, uh, and they pick them up together. So Americans work together and don't wait for the government to solve the problem. So that's what made America great in the Jacksonian era. Uh, Tocqueville argued there's a more recent book from my coming of age, the 1990s, and he says, hey, what's, a, what's the matter with America today in the 90s is that uh, Americans have become less joiners. Uh, we've become isolated from each other. And, you know, 30 years later, uh, social media kind of accentuates that. Yeah, we, you know, we read each other's posts, but the connection we feel in, like, online groups, not quite the same thing as rubbing shoulders with each other, you know. Um, I kind of enjoy talking about this, but not near as much as where I'm, you know, looking at my students and I'm seeing, you know, there's something about being together in a room, right? Um, and, and so uh, Putnam was the guy who wrote uh, Bowling Alone, and he said his evidence for the fact that we don't do what Tocqueville said made us great as much anymore is that people bowl, bowl more than ever before. They go bowling. But they go bowling by themselves. They're less likely to join bowling leagues. 
Uh, and in the fall, one thing I did, and you know, um, you know, I was kind of plotting about, you know, we go bowling together. You know, I was also there was all other field trips I was plotting about. Uh, but in the fall, we went bowling together, and we kind of talked politics every year, and that that's fun, you know, based on the bowling alone theory. And the idea is, if you go bowling together, people who kind of disagree on things, Maggie, look out. Hey, my cat's trying to uh, knock down a, a, a bird nest. All right, uh, so I'm going to walk over here and talk at the same time. Come on, Maggie. All right, uh, yeah, cats do. I got this great cat. You hear the cat? Uh, but the cat is being a cat, and I don't know, there ain't no sense in knocking down that dang bird nest. All right, come on over here. All right, uh, cat's the most reliable. We got two dogs and a cat, and the dogs won't follow you. You know, the, the cat's the only one that comes when you call you, unless the cat is sitting very close to a bird nest, at which point it acts like he doesn't know what he's talking, what I'm, she acts like she doesn't know what I'm talking about. All right. Uh, sorry about that. All right, but um, so the idea is, there you go. That's better. All right, she's hanging out with me now. She's not. Uh, uh, the idea is that uh, what makes America great is that we work together to solve problems. Local groups. Uh, so interest groups are good things in that they get you involved. They link us to the government. And then finally, it's kind of the argument, kind of the, the thesis of uh, thank you for smoking in a way, right? He's speaking out for a bad cause. Uh, but the folks who want to uh, shut him up are a cure worse than the disease. And in, that, in the actual movie, and you didn't see this part, so you might want to look it up. Uh, but there's an anti-smoking interest group, and they're like a violent group. So they kidnap him, uh, and they hook him up to all these electrodes that are going to send tobacco into his body on steroids. And so they're going to try to give him cancer in, in like a week. Um, and I don't know, somehow or another, I can't remember, somehow or another he, they let him go or he escapes. Um, and so that, that scene where he's testifying... Uh, is right after he escapes. So the movie's kind of making the case that, yeah, he's bad, but the folks that are going after him are worse. Uh, they has got free speech. And by the way, you know, uh, it seems to me... Let's see. So, so let's see if I... Uh, here's my counter-argument. Who is Nick Naylor today? I really, really believe that the person, the actual person who is Nick Naylor today uh, is Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg uh, has made, has made, he's like a Pied Piper, right? And he's made pot smoking just so very popular. Uh, man, I really believe that. Uh, and Snoop Dogg's just like Nick. He's cool. I mean, he's the coolest guy in America, right? There is nobody cooler than Snoop Dogg. And because he's cool and he's charming, um, if he says, hey, pot's just fine, it doesn't really hurt you, yada, 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 well, it must be true because he's so cool and charming. Um, so, I mean, I don't see, he's just a Pied Piper. Yeah, he's good at it. You know, when I, and when I was, you know, when I was growing up, nobody thought pot was good, all right? Uh, and by the way, the pot that people smoke today, you know, it's like 30 times stronger than hippie pot. Um, so, I mean, I'm troubled by it. Um, so here's like the counter arguments. All right, um, one more, ooh, one more. So you got one more argument that is good. So you're gonna end up with one, two, three, four arguments in favor of being a good thing. Pluralism, all right, uh, the system works because the groups are competing with each other, all right? Uh, so that's what Madison was arguing in Federalist 10. No faction's gonna dominate in a large republic because you'll have groups kinda offsetting each other. So yeah, you've got the ACLU, but you got the Christian Coalition, or yeah, you've got the Christian Coalition, but you've got the ACLU, which a whichever way you want to go with that. So there's effective groups on each side of every issue. 
Uh, so pluralism says these groups are just, you know, these interest groups are just kind of giving a voice to the members. Uh, it's just kind of democracy in action, you know, and the most effective groups, it's not exactly direct democracy where the numbers win, but the most effective groups uh, are, are going to have their say and, you know, be most effective. All right. Elite theory. Okay. All right, so here's where thank you for smoking comes back in, and it, it effectively raises it. So in certain ways, thank you for smoking is just really, really even-handed if you think clearly about it. Uh, so I think that's why the, the movie's good. Why is it that the best lobbyist works for Big Tobacco? I mean, he's phenomenal at his job. He's clearly, there's nobody that thinks smoking's good for you. We all know it's bad. And he's convincing us to smoke. By the end of the movie, you almost want to go out and buy a pack of cigarettes, even though you know it's bad for you and your family, secondhand smoke, yada, yada, yada. All right, so why is it that the best lobbyist is working for big tobacco as opposed to the anti-tobacco groups or for like some homeless interest group or... The emo here, why is it, here we go, here's the right example, why is it the best lobbyist is working for Big Tobacco and not the American Cancer Society? Well, because Big Tobacco has more money and he's a hired gun uh, and he will make whatever, you know, what does he say in there when he's talking to his son? There's no, if you argue well enough, you're never wrong. If your argument is logical enough, you're never wrong. Uh, that's sophisticated. By the way, Socrates was arguing against a group of people called the Sophists, who were basically hired teachers. They'd go down the road and argue, and they, they were like homeschool teachers. So they go to one house and they teach the kids that abortion was good. They go to the next house and teach the kids that abortion was bad, uh, depending on what the parents paid them to say. So that's the, their Sophists, and today the word sophisticated comes from that. And a sophisticated person doesn't get worked up about anything because they can just kind of see all sides of everything. Um, almost a uh, synonym for the word cosmopolitan. Um, and so, um, so the elite theory says, you know, it's not the, the people with the deepest pockets are going to have the best arguments, not because they've got the best cause, but because they can hire the best lawyers and, and lobbyists. All right, uh, so that's a problem. Okay, second thing. Interest groups are undemocratic. They're not working for the public good. Uh, they're working for whatever their pet cause is. That's not good for everybody as a whole. All right, so I don't know. Let's use this argument, even though I'm show sure enough going to join the ARP once I get old enough and get uh, my travel benefits. Why do we have a big debt? Well, it's kind of because of the ARP. You know, uh, Social Security is called the third rail of American politics. Nobody ever argues for cutting Social Security because the ARP is so effective, they'll uh, mount a big campaign against anybody who tries to cut Social Security. So if you were serious about the debt, you'd cut Social Security. It costs a lot of money, and Medicare costs a lot of money. But because the ARP is so effective, nobody really talks about that, you know. Even somebody like Trump who says, you know, he's not scared of taking on, you know, draining the swamp. He ain't going to drain that part of the swamp. Uh, why? Because of uh, ARP. All right. Why do we not have gun control measures? Because of the NRA. Now, notice those of you who are uh, big on the gun calls, you know, one person's special interest is another person's calls, right? All right. Uh, you know, my, my parents certainly believe in what the ARP is doing and I want them to get, I want my parents to get their, uh, uh, their benefits. Um, but each group spending calls, cause spending to go way up. It's not good for democracy as a whole. What's good for one particular group is not good for the public. That's why that's kind of accounts for the rise of the public interest groups. You know, they're trying to counter the, you know, the interest groups that are very, um, representing, you know, the big car companies uh, in the case of, uh, you know, the consumer group, public citizen. Is there another one? Yeah, there. Uh, 
10. You think 10? Well, if we did 10, you're more likely to be honest. Pretty easy to memorize 10, isn't it? So why don't you do that? That way, that way uh, I can be more uh, confident that you're, uh, that you're uh, being honest. And maybe I'll, send you, I'll find something to send you. So between the two of those things, that would be a good assignment. Again, do Monday. All right. Okay, is that it? Yep, that's it. All right, what do you think? I think that was about 30 minutes. Maybe to post a little easier. Oh, I hope, I hope, I hope. All right, so this dot means there's one. I think I turned on the sound. 